Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> All right, so we're reading, continue reading from Kento 1. We're at chapter 7, text 7. So we just want to say, even though the kirtan is going on downstairs and London Mellows is happening, still we're going to read because it's vitally important to our spiritual lives that we read and hear from Srimad Bhagavatam daily. Um, <coughs> so, Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 7 Simply by giving oral reception to this Vedic literature, the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion and fearfulness. Popo. There are various senses of which the ear is the most effective. This sense works even when a man is deep asleep. One can protect himself from the hands of an enemy while awake, but while asleep one is protected by the ear only. The importance of hearing is mentioned here in connection with attaining the highest perfection of life, namely getting free from free material pangs. Everyone is full of lamentation at every moment. He is after the mirage of illusory things and he is always afraid of his supposed enemy. These are the primary symptoms of material disease and it is definitely suggested herein that simply by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam one gets attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. And as soon as this is affected the symptoms of the material diseases disappear. Srila Vyasadev saw the all-perfect personality of Godhead and in this statement, the all-perfect personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is clearly confirmed. The ultimate result of devotional service is to develop genuine love for the Supreme Personality. Love is a word which is often used in relation with man and woman. And love is the only word that can be properly used to indicate the relation between Lord Krishna and the living entities. The living entities are mentioned as Prakriti in the Bhagavad Gita, and in Sanskrit Prakriti is a feminine object. The Lord is always described as the Param Purusha, or the Supreme Male Personality. Thus, the affection between the Lord and the living entities is something like that between the male and the female. Therefore, the term love of Godhead is quite appropriate. Loving devotional <coughs> service to the Lord begins with hearing about the Lord. There is no difference between the Lord and the subject matter heard about him. The Lord is absolute in all respects, and thus there is no difference between him and the subject matter heard about him. Therefore, hearing about him means immediate contact with him by the process of vibration of the transcendental sound. And the transcendental sound is so effective that it acts at once by removing all material affections mentioned above. As mentioned before, a living entity develops a sort of complexity by material association, and the illusionary engagement of the material body is accepted as an actual fact. Under such false complexity, the living beings under different categories of life become illusioned in different ways. Even in the most developed stage of <coughs> the same illusion prevails in the form of many isms and devise the loving relation with the Lord and thereby devise the loving relation between man and man. By hearing the subject matter of Shumai Bhagavatam, this false complexity of materialism is removed and real peace in society begins, which politicians aspire for so eagerly in so many political situations. The politicians want a peaceful situation between man and man and nation and nation, but at the same time, because of too much attachment for material domination, there is illusion and fearfulness. Therefore, the politicians' peace conferences cannot bring about peace in society. 
It can only be done by hearing the subject matter described in the Srimad Bhagavatam about the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. The foolish politicians may go on holding peace and summit conferences for hundreds of years, but they will fail to achieve success. Until we reach the stage of re-establishing our lost relation with Krishna, the illusion of accepting the body as a self will prevail, and this fearfulness will also prevail. As for the validity of Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are hundreds and thousands of evidences from revealed scriptures, and there are hundreds and thousands of evidences from personal experiences of devotees in various places like Vrindavan, Navadweep, and Puri. Even in the Kamudi Dictionary, the syn synonyms of Krishna are given as the son of Yashoda and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parabrahman. The conclusion is that simply by hearing the Vedic literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, one can have direct connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and thereby one can attain the highest perfection of life by transcending worldly miseries, illusion, and fearfulness. These are practical tests for one who has actually given a submissive hearing to the readings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Text 8. The great sage... Vyasadeva, after compiling the Srimad Bhagavatam and revising it, taught it to his own son Sukadeva Goswami, who was already engaged in self-realization. <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural commentation on the Brahma Sutras compiled by the same author. This Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra is meant for those who are already engaged in self-realization. Srimad Bhagavatam is so made that one becomes at once engaged in the path of self-realization simply by hearing the topics. Although it is especially meant for the Paramahamsas or those who are totally engaged in self-realization, it works into the depths of the hearts of those who may be worldly men. Worldly men are all engaged in sense gratification, but even such men will find in this Vedic literature a remedial measure for their material diseases. Sukadev Goswami was a liberated soul from the very beginning of his birth, and his father taught him Srimad Bhagavatam. Amongst mundane scholars, there is some diversity of opinion as to the date of completion of Srimad Bhagavatam. It is, however, certain from the text of the Bhagavatam that it was compiled before the disappearance of King Parikshit and after the departure of Lord Krishna. When Maharaj Parikshit was ruling the world as the king of Bharavash, he chastised the personality of Kali. According to revealed scriptures and astrological calculation, the age of Kali is in its 5,000th year. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam was compiled not less than 5,000 years ago. Mahabharata was compiled before Srimad Bhagavatam, and the Puranas were compiled before Mahabharata. That is an estimation of the date of compilation of the different Vedic literatures. A synopsis of Srimad Bhagavatam is given before the detailed description under instruction of Narada. Srimad Bhagavatam is the science for following the path of Nivriti Marg. The path of Nivriti Marg was condemned by Narada. That path is the natural inclination for all conditioned souls. The theme of Srimad Bhagavatam is the cure of the materialistic disease of the human being, or stopping completely the pangs of material existence. Mm. Text number 9. Sri Shanaka asked Sutta Goswami, Sri Shukadev Goswami was already on the path of self-realization, and thus he was pleased with his own self. So why did he take the trouble to undergo study of such a vast literature? Purport. For the people in general, the highest perfection of life is to cease from material activities and be fixed on the path of self-realization. Those who take pleasure and sense enjoyment or those who are fixed in material bodily welfare work are called karmis. Out of thousands and millions of such karmis, one may become an atmarama by self-realization. Atma means self and arama means to take pleasure. Everyone is searching after the highest pleasure. 
but the standard of pleasure of one may be different from the standard of another. Therefore, the standard of pleasure enjoyed by the karmis is different from the atmaramas. The atmaramas are completely indifferent to material enjoyment in every respect. Srila Shukadeva Goswami had already attained that stage, and still he was attracted to undergo the trouble of studying the great Bhagavatam literature. This means that Srimad Bhagavatam is a postgraduate study even for the Atmaramas, who have surpassed all the studies of Vedic knowledge. <clears throat> Text 10. All different varieties of Atmaramas, those who take pleasure in Atma or spirit self, especially those established on the path of self-realization, though free from all kinds of material bondage, desire to render unalloyed devotional service unto the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberating souls. Prabhupada. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained this Atmarama sloka very vividly before his chief devotee Srila Sanatana Goswami. He points out 11 factors in the sloka, namely 1. Atmarama, 2. Munaya, 3. Nigranta, 4. Api, 5. Cha, 6. Urukrama, 7. Kurvanti, 8. Ahoytukam, 9. Bhaktim, 10. Itham Bhutaguna, and 11. Hari. According to the Vishwa Prakash Sanskrit Dictionary, there are 7 synonyms for the word Atmarama, which are as follows. 1. Brahman, the absolute truth. 2. Body, 3. Mind, 4. Endeavour, 5. Endurance, 6. Intelligence, and 7. Personal Habits. The word Munaya refers to 1. Those who are thoughtful. 2. Those who are grave and silent. 3. Ascetics. 4. The persistent. 5. Mendicants. 6. Sages. and 7. Saints. The word Nigranta conveys these ideas. Number 1. One who is liberated from omniscience. Number 2. One who has no connection with scriptural injunctions i.e. who is free from the obligation of the rules and regulations mentioned in revealed scriptures like ethics, Vedas, philosophy, psychology and metaphysics, in other words the fools, the illiterates, the urchins, etc. who have no connection with other regulative principles. Number three, a capitalist and number also four, one who is penniless. <coughs> According to the Shabda Kosha dictionary, the affix ni is used in the case of 1. Certainty, 2. Counting, 3. Building, and 4. Forbiddance, and the word granta is used in the sense of wealth, thesis, vocabulary, etc. The word urukrama means the one whose activities are glorious. Krama means step. This word, Urukrama, specifically indicates the Lord's incarnation as Vamana, who covered the whole universe by immeasurable steps. Lord Vishnu is powerful and his activities are so glorious that he has created the spiritual world by his internal potency and the material world by his external potency. By his all-pervading features, he is everywhere present as the supreme truth. And in his personal feature, he is always present in his transcendental abode of Goloka Vindavan, where he displays his transcendental pastimes in all variedatedness. His activities cannot be compared to anyone else's, and therefore the word Urukrama is just applicable <coughs> to him only. According to the Sanskrit verbal arrangement, karbanti refers to doing things for someone else. Therefore, it means that the Atmaramas render devotional service unto the Lord, not for personal interests, but for the pleasure of the Lord, Urukrama. Kartu means causal. There are many causes for one's sense satisfaction, and they can be chiefly classified as material enjoyment, mystic powers, and liberation, which are generally desired by progressive persons. As far as material enjoyments are concerned, they are innumerable, 
and the materialists are eager to increase them more and more because they are under the illusory energy. There is no end to the list of material enjoyments, nor can anyone in the material universe have all of them. As far as the mystic powers are concerned, they are eight in all, such as to become the minutest in form, to become weightless, to have anything one desires, to lord it over the material nature, to control other living beings, to throw earthly globes in outer space, etc. These mystic, pow mystic powers are mentioned in the Bhagavatam. The forms of liberation are five in number. Therefore, unalloyed devotion means service to the Lord without desire for the above-mentioned personal benefits. In the powerful personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna can be fully satisfied by such unalloyed devotees free from all sorts of desires for personal benefit. Unalloyed devotional service of the Lord progresses in different stages. Practice of devotional service in the material field is of 81 different qualities. And above such activities is the transcendental practice of devotional service, which is one, and is called sadhana bhakti. When unalloyed practice of sadhana bhakti is matured into a transcendental love for the Lord, the transcendental loving service of the Lord begins gradually developing into nine progressive stages of loving service under the headings of attachment, love, affection, feelings, affinity, adherence, following, ecstasy, and intense feelings of separation. <clears throat> the attachment of an, of an inactive devotee develops up to the stage of transcendental love of God. Attachment of an active servitor develops up to the stage of adherence, and that for a friendly devotee develops up to the stage of following. And the same is also the case for the parental devotees. Devotees in conjugal love develop ecstasy up to the stage of intense feelings of separation. These are some of the features of unalloyed devotional service of the Lord. According to Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, the import of the word Itham Bhuta is complete bliss. Transcendental bliss <coughs> and the realization of impersonal Brahman becomes comparable to the scanty water contained in the pit made by a cow's hoof. It is nothing compared with the ocean of bliss of the vision of the personage of Godhead. A personal form of Lord Sri Krishna is so attractive that it comprehends all attraction, all bliss and all taste rasas. These attractions are so strong that no one wants to exchange them for material enjoyment, mystic powers and liberation. There is no need of logical arguments in support of this statement. But out of one's own nature, one becomes attracted by the qualities of Lord Sri Krishna. We must know for certain that the qualities of the Lord have nothing to do with mundane qualities. All of them are full of bliss, knowledge and eternity. There are innumerable qualities of the Lord, and one is attracted by one quality, while another is attracted by another. Great sages such as the four bachelor devotees, <laughs> Sanaka, Sanatan, Sananda and Sanatan Kumar, were attracted by the fragrance of flowers and tulsi leaves anointed with the pulp of sandalwood offered at the lotus feet of the Lord. Similarly, Shukadeva Goswami was attracted by the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Shukadeva Goswami was already situated in the liberated stage, yet he was attracted by the pastimes of the Lord. This proves that the quality of his pastimes has nothing to do with material affinity. Similarly, the young cowherd damsels were attracted by the bodily features of the Lord, and Rukmini was attracted by hearing about the glories of the Lord. Lord Krishna attracts even the mind of the goddess of fortune. He attracts in special cases the minds of all the young girls. He attracts the minds of the elderly ladies by parental affection. He attracts the minds of the males in the humors of service, servitude, and friendship. The word Hari conveys various <coughs> meanings, but the chief import of the word is that he, the Lord, vanquishes everything inauspicious and takes away the mind of the devotee by awarding pure transcendental love. By remembering the Lord in acute distress, one can be free from all varieties of miseries and anxieties. Gradually, the Lord vanquishes all obstacles on the path of devotional service of a pure devotee. And the result of nine devotional activities, such as hearing and chanting, 
becomes manifested. By his personal features and transcendental attributes, the Lord attracts all psychological activities of a pure devotee. Such is the attractive power of Lord Krishna. The attraction is so powerful that a pure devotee never hankers for any one of the four principles of religion. These are the attractive features of the transcendental attributes of the Lord. And adding to this the words api and cha, one can increase the imports unlimitedly. According to Sanskrit grammar, there are seven synonyms for the word api. So by interpreting each and every word of this shloka, one can see unlimited numbers of transcendental qualities of Lord Krishna that attract the mind of a pure devotee. <clears throat> so that was the famous Atmarama verse. Text number 11. Srila Shukadeva Goswami, son of Srila Vyasadeva, was not only transcendentally powerful, he was also very dear to the devotees of the Lord. Thus, he underwent the study of this great narration, Srimad Bhagavatam. According to Brahma Vivarta Purana, Srila Shukadeva Goswami was a liberated soul even within the womb of his mother. Srila Vyasadeva knew that the child, after his birth, would not stay at home. Therefore, he, Vyasadeva, impressed upon him the synopsis of Bhagavatam so that the child could be made attached to the transcendental activities of the Lord. After his birth, the child was still more educated in the subject of the Bhagavatam by recitation of the actual poems. The idea is that generally the liberated souls are attached to the feature of impersonal Brahman with a monistic view of becoming one with the Supreme Whole. But by the association of pure devotees like the Asdev, even the liberated soul becomes attracted to the transcendental qualities of the Lord. By the mercy of Sri Narada, Srila Vyasadeva was able to narrate the great epic of Srimad Bhagavatam. And by the mercy of Vyasadeva, Srila Sukadev Goswami was able to grasp the import. That was oh, thunder. Yeah. <laughs> All the kirtan downstairs is causing the rain. The transcendental qualities of the Lord are so attractive that Srila Sugadev Goswami <coughs> became a detached from being completely absorbed in impersonal Brahman and positively took up the personal activity of the Lord. Practically, he was thrown from the impersonal conception of the absolute truth, thinking within himself that he had simply wasted so much time in devoting himself to the impersonal feature of the Supreme. Or in other words, he realized more transcendental bliss with the personal feature than the impersonal. And from that time, not only did he himself become very dear to the Vishnu Jans or the devotees of the Lord, but also the Vishnu Jans became very dear to him. The devotees of the Lord, who do not wish to kill the individuality of the living entities, and who desire to become personal servitors of the Lord, do not very much like the impersonalists. And similarly, the impersonalists who desire to become one with the Supreme are unable to evaluate, evaluate the devotees of the Lord. Thus, from time immemorial, these two transcendental pilgrims have sometimes been competitors. In other words, each of them likes to keep separate from the other because of the ultimate personal and impersonal realizations. Therefore, it appears that Srila Shukadeva Goswami also had no liking for the devotees. But since he himself became a saturated devotee, he desired always the transcendental association of the Vishnu Jans. And the Vishnu Jans also liked the, his associations since he became a personal Bhagavat. Thus, both the son and the father were completely cognizant of transcendental knowledge in Burman. And afterwards, both of them became absorbed in the personal features of the Supreme Lord. The question as to how Shukadeva Goswami was attracted by the narration of the Bhagavatam is thus completely answered by this shloka. Text 12, Sutta Goswami thus addressed the rishis headed by Shonaka, 
Now I shall begin the transcendental narration of the Lord Sri Krishna and topics of the birth activities and deliverance of King Pariksha, the sage amongst kings, as well as topics of the renunciation of the worldly order by the sons of Pandu. Popo. Lord Krishna is so kind to the fallen souls that he personally incarnates himself amongst the different kinds of living entities and takes part with them in daily activities. Any historical fact, old or new, which has a connection with the activities of the Lord is to be understood as the transcendental narration of the Lord. Without Krishna, all the supplementary literatures like the Puranas and Mahabharata are simply stories or historical facts. But with Krishna, they become transcendental, and when we hear of them, we at once become transcendentally related with the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam is also a Purana, but the special significance of this Purana is that the activities of the Lord are central, and not just supplementary historical facts. Srimad Bhagavatam is thus recommended by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the spotless Purana. There is a class of less intelligent devotees of the Bhagavat Purana who <coughs> desire to relish at once the activities of the Lord narrated in the tenth canto without first understanding the primary cantos. They are under the false impression that the other cantos are not concerned with Krishna, and thus more foolishly than intelligently they take the reading of the tenth canto. These readers are specifically told herein that the other cantos of the Bhagavatam are as important as the tenth canto. No one should try to go into the matters of the tenth canto without having thoroughly understood the purport of the other nine cantos. Krishna and his pure devotees, like the Pandavas, are on the same plane. Krishna is not without his devotees of all the rasas, and the pure devotees, like the Pandavas, are not without Krishna. The devotees and the Lord are interlinked, and they cannot be separated. Therefore, talks about them are all Krishna Kata or topics of the Lord. Text number 13 and 14. <coughs> Excuse me. When the respective warriors, when the respective warriors of both camps, namely the Kauravas and the Pandavas, were killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and the dead warriors obtained their deserved destinations. And when the sons of Dhritarashtra fell down lamenting, his spine broken, being beaten by the club of Bhimasane, the son of Dronacharya Ashwatthama beheaded the five sleeping sons of Draupadi and delivered them as a prize to his master, <coughs> foolishly thinking that he would be pleased. Duryodhan, however, disapproved of the heinous act and he was not pleased in the least. Purport. Transcendental topics of the activities of Lord Krishna and the Srimad Bhagavatam begin from the end of the battle of Kurukshetra, where the Lord himself spoke about himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, both the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are transcendental topics of Lord Krishna. The Gita is Krishna Kata, or topics of Krishna, because it is spoken by the Lord. And the Bhagavatam is also Krishna Kata because it is spoken about the Lord. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted everyone to be informed of both Krishna Katas by his order. Lord Krishna Chaitanya is Krishna himself in the garb of a devotee of Krishna. And therefore the versions of both Lord Krishna and Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are identical. Lord Chaitanya desired that all who are born in India seriously understand such Krishna Katas and then after fully real and then after full realization preach the transcendental message to everyone in all parts of the world. That will bring about the desired peace and prosperity of the stricken world. <coughs> Text 15, Draupadi, the mother of the five children of the Pandavas, after hearing of the massacre of her sons, began to cry in distress with eyes full of tears, trying to pacify in her in her great loss. Arjuna spoke to her thus. Text 16, O gentle lady, when I present you with the head of that Brahmana, after beheading him with arrows from my Gandiva bow, I shall then wipe the tears from your eyes and pacify you. Then after burning your son's bodies, you can take your bath standing on his head. 
Bapo. An enemy who sets fire to the house, administers poison, attacks all of a sudden with deadly weapons, thunders well for absurds. Uh, uh, usurps. U usurps. 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 Agricultural fields. Or entices one's wife is called an aggressor. Such an aggressor, though he be a Brahmana or a so-called son of a Brahmana, has to be punished in all circumstances. When Arjuna promised to behead the aggressor named Ashwatthama, he knew well that Ashwatthama was the son of a Brahmana. But because the so-called Brahmana acted like a butcher, he was taken as such. And there was no question of sin in killing such a Brahmana's son, who proved to be a villain. Let me read. <coughs> read two more and finish. Arjuna, who is guided by the infallible Lord as friend and driver, thus satisfied the dear lady by such statements. Then he dressed in armor and armed himself with furious weapons. And getting into his chariot, he set out to follow Ashwatthama, the son of his martial teacher. Text 18. Ashwatthama, the murderer of the princes, seeing from a great distance Arjuna coming at him with great speed, fled in his chariot, panic-stricken, just to save his life, as Brahma fled in fear from Shiva. Purport. According to the reading matter, either Ka or Arka are there, sorry, according to the reading matter, either Ka or Arkaha, there are two references in the Puranas. Ka means Brahma, one who once became allured by his daughter and began to follow her, which infuriate, infuriated Shiva, who attacked Brahma with his trident. Brahmaji fled in fear of his life. As far as Arkaha is concerned, there is a reference in the Vaman Purana. There was a demon by the name Vid. Vidyun Mali, Vidyun Mali, who was gifted with a glowing golden airplane which traveled to the back of the sun and night disappeared because of the glowing effulgence of this plane. Thus, the sun god became angry and with his virulent rays he melted the plane. This enraged Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva then attacked the sun god who fled away and at last fell down at Kashi, Varanasi, and the place became famous as Lolarka. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we'll pick up again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Text 19. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Grantaraj Srima Bhagavatam Ki Jai. And if anyone would like a set of Srima Bhagavatams, please get in touch. We'd be happy to throw the order for you. <laughs> Here we go.